Tell the generation. Glory and honor praise to him. Glory to him. Glory to glory to God. Glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to God. Yes, tell him. Tell him. Amen. He has done. Oh, yes. Glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to God. Yeah, glory to God. Glory to glory to glory to glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Praise His name. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Give Him the glory. Give Him the praise. Oh yes, glorify him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings, my brethren. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our teleconference another sun. The evening we are here to give God thanks and to give Him praise and to give Him glory. Glory to glory to glory to God. Hallelujah. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. He deserves our thanksgiving and all, the, all we can say unto Him because He's good. He is a good God. God is good. And praise the name of the Lord. We are thanking God for His mercies. We thank Him for His grace. We thank Him for His love. We thank Him for His blessed loving kindness and all that we He has done for us. Then they said one to the other that the Lord has done great things for us. We are, we are glad. Praise the Lord. And we are glad today to be alive to be in the land of the living and to give him praise because you know the dead the dead cannot praise God only the living because our God is the living God praise the Lord so welcome to our teleconference service we're going to go right into our service and before I do let us have a short prayer father we thank you we praise you we bless you we worship you we glorify you we thank you for all that you have done we thank you for what you are doing for us now and we're thanking you for what you're about to do oh lord we worship you and we praise you and we give you glory bless us and lead us on we thank you in jesus name amen amen so we continue our teleconference and our topic has been faith and favor with god this is part six of our, uh, our episode on, and, um, on faith. Um, we know that faith is a very essential, essential part of our life, of our Christianity. Without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. Every child that come to God, everyone that come to God, the Bible says, must believe that He is. 
and that he is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. There's no if or but or maybe in those words. Whosoever come to God, who come, come to Jesus, come to the Lord, must believe that he is God and must believe that he is also a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. And so we are on this topic of faith because faith is a very essential part of our walk with God. It's a very essential part of our Christianity. Without faith, we, we can't get anywhere with God. We can't even move one step further with God without faith. So we all have to believe that He is and that He is a rewarder to those that diligently seek Him. Now, we are on the topic of faith and favor with God, but subtitle is um, obtaining, obtaining a good report. Because true faith, it tells us that the elders, the patriots, and the prophets of all, every one of them, we, they became, they got favor with God. They were favored by God because of faith. That's what it says. They obtained a good report. And we're looking back on Abraham and how God tested Abraham, and we see how God bought him out, how God blessed him because of his faith. And so Abraham now become the father of faith. So when we think about faith, we think about Abraham who was uh, the forerunner of faith, who showed us what it is to trust God, who showed us what it is to know God, who showed us what it is to believe in God and stand up on his promise. So favor, Abraham was then the forerunner of faith for us all. We can look back on the life of Abraham and see how God, how he was favored by God. He was, he was told to offer his son as a sacrifice. And because he knew the voice of God, not only he knew the voice of God, he knew the voice of God, but he knew that God was faithful and God would not let him down. He knew that. He had the confidence. Moving on, we see how he went to offer his only son upon the, upon the mountain and how God stopped him at that last minute when he was about to slay his son. God stopped him and God provided for him a ram in the ticket and he took the ram from the ticket who was caught and after that ram as a sacrifice. He was justified because he believed God. So that's an example for us. And then we went and we talked about, we spent a couple of parts on, on, on Job, how God, how Job was tested to the utmost. He was tested to the limit. As much as he lost all his possession through the devil, the wicked one, who was jealous of, of Job because Job feared God. And the devil don't like anybody who fear God. The devil don't like anybody who obey God. The devil don't like anyone who serve God. So we see because Job served God and Job loved God. The devil tested God, told God that tested the faith of Job. Went to God and said, does Job fear you for nothing? Have you made a hedge around him? On every side. In that time, Job was so wealthy in his days. He had he had so much an increase in camel, in asses, in bullocks, and all so much. He was a very wealthy man in his days. But even though he was wealthy, he served God. He loved God. And Satan t tell God to test him. And God allows Satan to test him. Job lost all his possession, all that he had, everything that he had. And yet, Job would not curse God. Job said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. And he blessed God. 
How great is that? That is a faith. That is an example for us to see, to know that whatever happened to us, God's love for us remain. And God's love for us is unfading. It doesn't matter what we go through. The love of God is over us. The joy, the peace is covering us. And so we see what happened when Job lost all his possession. Not only he lost his possession, but the devil was not satisfied with taking away everything that he had. The devil wanted to destroy his body. In, in, in essence, the devil wanted to kill him. But the devil could not kill him unless God permitted him to. So he went to God and said, if you touch his skin, then he will curse you. And God gave him permission, but God said, spare his life. So as much as the devil could cover his skin with boils and all sorts of things came upon him, and he was in such a discomfort, but yet for all, he trusted in the Lord. And that's his faith. That is faith. That is faith. So it says, those men, Abraham, Job, and others, they obtained a good report before God. God was satisfied with their faith, with their trust in him. And God wants us to be the same. God wants us to trust him just the same. God wants us to lean on him just the same. If we are on the edge and we are feeling that we have lost it, trust in the Lord. He is an on-time God. He never fails. Not only he's never failed, but he's never late. He's always on time. And we can try. Try him. Taste and see, as the Bible says, that the Lord is good. Try him. Try God. See if he will not bring you out. So, talking about that, then we went on from Job. We went on to we are on Hebrews chapter 11. And um, we're looking at some parts of Hebrews chapter 11. When it tells us about how the elders obtained a good report all those men of old everyone you can think of everyone that wrote the scriptures that profess God that serve God prophets they were all tested and they stood by their conviction and they stood, stood by their faith and they were unwavering when it comes to trusting in God. That's what God wants for us. God wants us to not to doubt Him. We, we can't, God won't work for us when we doubt Him. We must, we must just believe that He's a great deliverer. We must believe that He is a great healer. We must believe that He is a great provider. And in all those instances, whenever we are in the circumstances as such, Call upon him. Call upon him. Call upon, call upon the Lord. So we're going to look at um, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read a few verses from 11 down to 29. And uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. It's still talking about Abraham. It says, um, Through faith also Sarah herself, this is Abraham's wife, received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful that promised. Therefore sprang there even one and him as good as dead. So many as stars in the skies for multitude and as the sand which is by the shore, seashore, innumerable. All these die in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrim in the earth. 
for they say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to return, to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to call their God, for he has prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, he offered Isaac, he had received the promise, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it is said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to rise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both sons, Joseph and worship, leaning upon top of the staff. By faith Joseph, when he had died, made mention of the parting of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months by his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. And by faith Moses, when he was come of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction for, with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch him. By faith he passed through the Red Sea by dry land, which the Egyptian assayed to do were drowned. Praise the Lord. By faith, by faith, we can do so much by faith. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're looking at faith. And this faith, it tells us, Sarah was past age. She was past the age of bearing, and though she was past the age, of, the age of bearing, but God promised that Abraham would have a seed, and that seed that Abraham had would multiply like the stars upon the sea, upon the, the skies, the stars in the skies and like the sand and the seashore. That's a promise that God made. And let's be assured, brethren, that God keep His promise. He is a promise-keeping God. And that in all, in everything we do, let us have in the far forefront of our mind that we can depend on God's Word. We can always depend on God's word because God cannot change his word. He says his word is forever settled in heaven. And he says 
heaven and earth shall pass away but my words heaven and earth shall pass this whole world may dissolve but the word of God will remain forever so whatever we do let us stand upon the word of God because God made that promise to Abraham that his seed would multiply like the stars in the sky ever look up ever look up on the sky on a starry night and see the innumerable amount of stars that is impossible to count totally impossible to count and go to the sea <laughs> can you count the sands on the seashore absolutely not but that's the promise that God gave Abraham and Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness if we believe God it will be accounted unto us for righteousness because whatever is not faith the Bible says is sin so doubting is sin we must believe as Abraham did so it was promised Isaac it was promised Abraham that she shall have the seed and Sarah when she was past age she conceived and she was delivered a child at past age God can do anything there's no age limit with God he can do anything and God allow Sarah to conceive and bring forth a child and they call his name Isaac because he was the promised one praise the Lord because it says he she Sarah judge him faithful who has promised we have to judge God faithful with his promises we have to judge him faithful as Sarah did and because she judged him faithful she waited for that child and she was she conceived and deliver a child even though she was past age nothing is impossible for God and it says therefore verse 12 therefore sprang Hebrews chapter 11 verse 12 therefore sprang there even one and him as good as dead so many as the stars in the sky for multitude and as the sand as in, and the seashore who can number now who can number the, the children of Abraham they're scattered over the entire world who can number them and God made that promise so it says on the first 13 that all these men they died in faith they died believing there's nothing as good as when we die believing they died in faith having not obtained the promise what is the promise the promise is what God has given to us today the Spirit of God coming to dwell in man they did not receive that promise but they believe and they saw it afar off and they hold it they embrace it verse 13 says they all died in faith not have received the promise but having seen them afar off were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrim on the earth can we confess today that we are just strangers and pilgrims as those men of old who obtained the promise who who did not obtain the promise they will die in faith having not received the promise the promise was given unto us but they are saved through their faith in God they are delivered through their faith in God so faith was the anchor that held them together in God having not having these died in faith have not received the final having seen them afar off they were persuaded they knew that time will come when God would deliver his people he knew that time when Jesus 
to come when God himself would come down on earth and dwell among men. They saw it. They are far off. They embrace it. And they were persuaded of it. And they embrace it and they confessed that they too are strangers and pilgrim on the earth. This earth is not our home. And that should be at the forefront of our mind every day that we, this is not our home. It says in verse 14, they, those patriots and prophets, they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. They were in a country, they sojourned the country, a Canaan, they sojourned. They saw the lands, they went through the lands. They encamped and they went through the land and they sojourned to the country. But they were seeking a country, not the one that they were in. They were seeking a heavenly place. And through faith, they held on to God and they held on to God's promises. Through faith. So how wonderful it is, brethren, when we have faith in God. How awesome it is when we can rely on God and we trust in Him that He's gone to prepare a place for us. He's gone to prepare a country for us. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. He's going to prepare a mansion for us. Each and every one of us will have a mansion. The patriots and the prophet, they saw this thing afar off. They embraced it. They trusted in the Lord. They served the Lord. And it says in verse 15, Truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. Say, when God told Abraham to come out of his kindred, among, out of his people, he went out, as God told him, away from his own people, his own kindred, his family, in other words. He left them because God selected him and tell him to come out. Now, the scriptures tell us if he was mindful of where he came from, he would have had opportunity to return. But, you know, it's like us when God calls us out of the world. We have opportunity to return if we are mindful of where we're coming from. But we should not be mindful of where we're coming from. We should be mindful of where we are going. The Bible says, If we be risen with Christ, set our affection on things above. Our affection. The patriots and prophets obtain a good promise, obtain a good report. Because their mind was focused on a better country than which they dwell. Their mind was main, mindful of a better city, not one on this earth, not one in this world. Their mind was focused upon a heavenly city, a heavenly home, one that, one that corrupts not, one that there's no crying, no dying, no fear, no doubt, and is joy unspeakable. And full of, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. If they were mindful. If God called us out of the world. And we are mindful of where we are coming from. Out of sin. Out of unrighteousness. Out of hate. Out of um, covetousness. And all those bad things. Envy and all those evil things that people live who don't know God would live in if we are mindful of the way we're coming from we have opportunity to return 
they had opportunity to return. But they seek it a city. And the only way to find a city is to go forward. Onward still is Jehovah's will. Though the billows dash and sway. But with a conquering thread we will push ahead. One way. One way to glory. Is to trust God. In the Lord, trust in the Lord. And it says, but now they desire a better country. The patriots and the prophets, they desire a better country. Look at the amount of land that God gave, that God showed to Abraham. Look at how it spread out. Look at the look where they were. Surrounded by many, many acres of land everywhere. Everything that you could want, you wish for. He, he said, look to the right, look to the left. Look in all directions. God said, I will give you this land. But Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, they desire a better country. And they knew that God had something even better for them. Now they desire a better country that is and heavenly. So it shows us clearly that they, even though they had all they needed in this world, they still was not satisfied. They desire a better country. It doesn't matter what we have in this world. We have nothing without Jesus. We have nothing without God. It doesn't matter how, how much we achieve in this world. We achieve nothing without God. We owe nothing in this world. Because for sure we come into this world empty and we will go out empty. Everything here is corrupt and is, is, will fade away. Nothing in this world lasts. We last. Nothing Neither wealth, nor fame, nor anything else. Nothing will last. We have no abiding city here. And so these men who obtained a better, who had obtained a good report, they desire a better country. That is heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Isn't that wonderful? Because they desire a he because they desire a better country, which is not in this world. That is the Bible tells in verse 16, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16, they desire a better country that is heavenly. They were not satisfied down here. And because they were not satisfied down here, it says God. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to call their God. Isn't it wonderful? You would say God, God is proud of these patriots and prophets because of their desire to serve God, to trust God, to lean upon His promise. God is pleased with those patriots and prophets. That's why they obtain a good report. For he prepared for them a city. So it, it comes back now way from then. Way from those patriots and prophets. Abraham, Isaac, jo Joseph. And all those prophets. Those patriots. It says God had prepared for them a city. God had prepared for those patriots and prophets a city. Not down here. It went on to say, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that received, he had received the promise, offered up his only begotten son. Abraham was prepared to offer his only begotten son. God himself offered 
his only begotten son, which is Jesus. So Abraham was a type as God, as a type of God, because he had a mind of God that he would offer his only son. But God offered his only son, Jesus, to this world to save us. Isn't that wonderful? By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. His only begotten son he was prepared to offer him up. Of whom it is said that in Isaac thy seed shall be called. God promised Abraham. Look at this. God promised Abraham. I will multiply your seed. As the stars in the sky. And as the sand in the seashore. But even though God said that to him. God said. Your seed. Your one seed. Offer him up to me. As a sacrifice. You see. But Abraham believed God. Look at this now. The faith that Abraham had in God. If we look at verse 19 of Hebrews 11, it says, Accounting, this is Abraham, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence he also received him a figure. The faith that Abraham had in God is that even if he obeyed God's word and slay his only son, offer his only son as a sacrifice to God, Abraham believed that even if he offered him up, God was able to rise him up again. You see the faith? That's, that's how Abraham Believe God. That even if he had slain his son Isaac, God was able to rise him up again. That is a faith. That is a great faith. How many of us would really do that? How many of us would have the faith to say, yes, God said I must offer my only son, the only one son that I have. As a sacrifice. But Abraham was willing to do that because his faith in God was unwavering. And if we want to get anywhere with God, we have to seek to have an unwavering faith, unwavering trust. Of course, we can't see God with our naked eye, but He is around us. He's a spirit. He's around us. He's everywhere. God's filled the universe. He's everywhere. So when we trust him and believe in him, we can prove him. And in verse 20 says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. Remember, Rebecca had two sons, and now one of them was Isaac, one of them was Jacob, and one was Esau. And we see what happened at. Um, Esau received the blessing. And because Esau, Jacob received the blessing, sorry. Jacob received the blessing. And because Esau sold his birthright, birthright, he actually sold his birthright for some pottage. Because he did this, he lost his blessing. He actually sold his birthright to Jacob. So God allowed Jacob to be blessed. And it was foretold before they, before he were born that 
the youngest shall rule over the oldest. Isaac was first born and Jacob was after him. But God loved Jacob because Jacob was a God-fearing man. And we can see that when he was out there and he saw the ladder coming down from heaven that Jacob was held on to the angel and Jacob wrestled with the angel. You know, this pathway is a wrestling, it is a fight, it's a fight. We have to prepare to wrestle. We have to prepare to hold on. When the sea gets rough, when the storm is blowing, we have to prepare. And this was Jacob. Jacob wrestled with the angel until the break of day. And then the angel said, let me go, the day breaketh. You know, sometimes we just have to wrestle, to wrestle, wrestle, wrestle with the enemy. Wrestle with God. Hold on to him. And yes, the angel said, let me go, the day breaketh. Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. That's what we want to do, trust in God and hold on to him. And never to let him go until we see the blessing. And that's why God loved Jacob. Because Jacob was ready to fight for his blessing. While Esau was ready to sell his blessing out. He sold his blessing, he sold his birthright. And then God says, Jacob I love, but Esau I hate. And then you can understand why. Because Jacob was prepared to fight for what is good. Esau was prepared to sell what is good. Sell out what is good. And this is faith. And Joseph, Jacob, was justified by his faith. And in verse 21 says, By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed his sons, Joseph, and worship, leaning on his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of his departing of the children of Israel, gave commandment concerning his bones. Because he knew that God would deliver the children of Israel while they were there. He knew. Joseph, by faith, he was the one that went to Egypt. And he was the one that they sold. His brother sold him unto the, uh, unto the Ishmaelites. And they took him to Egypt. He went to prison. And God bring him out and make him prince in Egypt. But he knew that God was going to deliver the children of Israel. So he told them concerning when he died. He said, take my bones back with you. I don't want my bones to remain in Egypt. So he knew by faith. Everything was through faith and by faith. Going on, it says, By faith when Moses was born, he was hid three months in his parents, by his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. They saw that Moses, when Moses was born, they hid him, in a, they hid him for three months and then they took him and put him in a basket on the river and God made it so that when Pharaoh's daughter saw the child she loved the child you see oh boy sometimes when we think how great God is God put love in the heart of Pharaoh's daughter for that child because that's the only way that he would survive you know God the, the Bible says when we always please the Lord he made even our enemies a peace with us when our ways please the Lord and when Pharaoh's daughter saw Moses on the water in a basket she loved him and the mother his mother was not afraid of the king's commandment because they trusted God because they knew God 
and God would not let them down. And so we see how Pharaoh's daughter took Moses and went into the palace and became a prince. Oh, praise God. It says, by faith, Moses, when he come of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. When, when Moses came of age, Moses knew that he was of the Hebrew tribe. He was from the Hebrew. He was a Hebrew. He realized he was a Hebrew when he came of age. And he says, he preferred, he refused to be called Pharaoh's daughter. He wanted to be with the people of God. Although he was prince in Egypt, but he loved his people. And he refused to be called Pharaoh's son of Pharaoh's daughter. But he says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses made a choice that he preferred to be among his people, the Hebrews, than to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Because that was referring to the world. Pharaoh's daughter, Pharaoh's kingdom, was a worldly kingdom. But the, but the, the Hebrews, his mother and his family was Hebrews, the true people of God. He preferred to suffer with them than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And so it is with us. When we think of the goodness of God and the goodness of Jesus, it doesn't matter what comes upon us. Let us be sure, let us hold on to him. No matter how hard it seems and the road gets rough and the going gets tough and the fire becomes hot, and all sorts of things. Moses was preferred to suffer with, with his people. He chose to suffer affliction with his people rather to enjoy the pleasures of Egypt, of the pleasures of sin for a season. For it, by faith he forsook Egypt not fear the wrath of the king, for he endured seeing him who is invisible. Moses endured. He left Egypt, he forsook Egypt. He left Egypt, all the grandeur, all the beauty, all the wealth, and everything that was in Egypt, all his prince, his princely wood. He forsook it. He turned away from it. For he endured seeing him that is invisible. Now the patriots and the prophets all saw him who is invisible, the invisible God. But they knew and they trusted and they believed and they leaned on his promise. They stood on his promises. Because he's a God of his word. Therefore, it says, through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he destroyed, lest that destroyed the firstborn should touch him. Through faith, Moses was told, God told Moses, he's going to slay the firstborn in Egypt. But he said to Moses, kill a lamb and put a mark upon the lintel of the house of the children of the Hebrew, the children of Israel. Put a, a blood mark upon the, upon the lintel. And when the destroying angels come, they will pass. This is why it's called the Passover. They kept the Passover. He kept the word of God. And so he obeyed God. He killed a lamb, put the blood on the lintel of his door, and when the destroying angel came, 
they saw the blood. Songwriter says, when I see the blood, God said, when I see the blood, this is something about blood. Blood has power. Blood has power. You know, the Bible says, even though Cain slew Abel, that the blood of Abel cried to God from the earth. Blood has power. So Moses kept the Passover, sprinkled the blood upon the lintel of the house that the children of Israel stayed and the destroyed angel passed. But all the firstborn of the children of Egypt, they were killed, they were all died, they were all killed because they did not have the blood. And so today we see that we plead the blood of Jesus over our life. That same blood, symbol of that blood, is in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. When we pray, plead the blood of Jesus over our life. And we will not suffer, we will not fear. We will not be in want. He will protect us. He will keep us. He will guide us. He will protect us. And the last verse said, By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which is Egyptian swayed to do were drowned. They came to the Red Sea when God delivered them from Egypt. They came to the Red Sea on their way to Canaan. And they got trapped. There was a Red Sea in front of them. They wanted and they needed to cross over. Then there was mountains on both sides. They can't climb the mountains. Then there was Pharaoh's armies behind them. They can't go back. Oh, praise the Lord. What it is ever feeling, I you ever feel a time when there's no way to turn and there's no you can't go to the left, you can't go to the right. The road in front of you is uncrossable and the enemy is behind. And this was how the children of Israel were trapped. But God said to Moses, stretch forth your hand. You see, God is a way maker, brethren. We have to remember God is a way maker. Stretch forth your hand, a rod. Stretch forth your rod across the sea. And Moses obeyed God. Stretch forth his hand, his rod across the sea. And then the water stood up on both sides. The water stood up. Hallelujah. And God clear the ground and they went through the Red Sea and the Bible says they went through on dry land, dry land. So God dry up the land where the sea was. Where the sea was they went through on dry land. And then the Egyptians they said let's go after them. Let's go after them. When they tried, God allowed them to go down into the down into the sea. And they were drowned. Because God did not open the Red Sea for any Egyptian. When God was to bless us, He blessed us. God did not open the sea for the Egyptian and they swayed to go. It was not for them. And the sea covered them. Oh, how did these men of old obtained a good report, true faith. And we should try every day to obtain a good report. We can do it day by day, a good report before God, that we trust in Him when we pray, we believe. We don't have to wait for the battle to be over. We can shout now. Shout now because we have the victory. Shout now because we are more than conquerors. 
Shout now because Jesus had paid the price. Shout now because we know this great I am. Shout now because he's on our side. We have the almighty God, the great I am. We have him on our side. He loves us. He cares for us. He wants nothing but that's but good for us. Let us trust him. Let us continue to believe in him. And let us give him the praise, the glory, and the honor that is due unto his name. Amen. God richly bless you, my brethren. We come to the end of this segment faith and favor with God we all need to have faith and favor we need to have faith and favor with God every one of us can have a good report before God it's not good that we can have a good report we can obtain a good report the patriots the prophets they were men like us they were people like us Abraham Isaac Joseph Elijah Elisha Oh, they were people just like us. They were they just ordinary people just like us. But the diff the thing is that they trusted in God and they proved God and they live for God and they obey God and God justified them and God blessed them and God made them promise. He promised them a city. Jesus promised us a, a, a home. Jesus promised us a mansion. Many of us, we work all our life in this, in, this, in this world and we never attain a mansion. But God has promised us a mansion. And he promised the patriots and prophet a city. And they believed and they trusted in him. Our God never failed. God richly bless you, my brethren. Thank you for joining our teleconference tonight. And let us hold fast to Jesus. Because he's holding fast to our, unto us. God bless you. I see. Um, God bless you, Sister McLean. We always like, good to have you. Bless the Lord. Um, would you like to share, would you say or share a thought with us before we closed? Oh, Brother Trump, you have well said. I'll just sing, just, just sing this song that keeps on ringing in my spirit. Mm -hmm. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, how to wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, how to wait. Praise the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord mm. shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. Mm -hmm. They shall walk and not faint. Let us continue to wait upon the Lord because he will come through for us. No matter what we have been going through, let us wait and be patient because he's a covenant keeping God. Mm -hmm. He keeps his covenant and mercy forever and he will never forget us. He knows 
that we are waiting. Mm -hmm. And I will see with the songwriter, yes, I'm next in line for my blessing. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you all and Lord bless you, Brother Spencer. Mm, God bless you. you. You know, it is so good to have faith, you know, because faith in God can do a lot. Mm -hmm. As we were talking, referring about Moses, M M M Moses and Abraham and the rest of of a patriot that died they did not see the promise mm -hmm. but they embrace it and yes. they believe it mm -hmm. because they know the god whom they serve hallelujah is a covenant keeping god and he know that god will fulfill his promise because he cannot lie he's not a god that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent mm -hmm. what he say he will do he will do it all we have to do is just embrace our faith and wait upon him and be of good courage. This is my few words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Mark. God bless you. Yes, we have to wait Thank upon you. the Lord. You know, God is never late. He's, he's a, he just doesn't fail. That's, it. That's what we have to, we all should know that he doesn't fail. He's not a God that fails. He cannot fail. And it will not fail us. And that's the confidence that we have from day to day that we can trust in Him. We, there's nothing else we can trust in in this world. We can trust in God. We can trust yeah. in the Lord. We can have a personal connection. We, yeah, thank you. That is true. We can't even trust ourselves. You know, we, you know the, the arms of flesh will fail us. How much, you know, we, how, how much can we do? We, we are limited, but God is unlimited. God, God we are, our power, we ha whatever power we have is, is nothing. God is all powerful. He has all the power. And that's the confidence that we have when we realize how good he is and how great he is. We, 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 are, we are satisfied if we stay in Him and trust Him. God bless you, yes. Sister Mark. Trust May God day. continue to keep you and, and cause His face to shine upon you. Well, yesterday we went to um, um, Evangelist Moise, uh, the 80th birthday thing. Uh, Pastor Winston was there, catering. Oh, Ah, uh, um, mission missionary uh, Morris from Leytonstone. So missionary Mo Morris, you know Pastor Morris at Leytonstone. Pastor Morris, yes, Pastor Morris, Pastor Morris Leytonstone. Oh, he's eighty-eight. No, he's ninety. His wife is eighty. Well, <laughs> and he's ninety. He's ninety. His wife is eighty. But his wife had a birthday. He has one. He has had one uh, a month ago, but he had his young. He, she had hers yesterday. So we all was there. Um, Pastor Winston was. Uh, he's a caterer. He was catering. I see him on there, but I think maybe he's uh, he's offline. Anyway, it was wonderful. Anyway, it was wonderful. It's nice to see people of God coming together. You know, and um, oh, a lot of people was there. Yes, yes, quite a few people was there. Quite a few people. Uh, oh, the, the, the place was filled. The hall was filled. We never hear about it, even though we'd have, we'd have some, we'd have some event at our um, church yesterday. Yeah, I know your church is very busy. Your church is yeah. very, very busy, always having some function. Even, even this evening, they did have, um, they have been, um, evening started at three o'clock, but I didn't stay. I, I did have to come home. For, yeah, I understand, home home. understand. Carton is at work, so my dad was to come home. I didn't stop. Uh, I understand. You can't be everywhere at all times. Praise the Lord. So, um, Sister Rose, would you like to say a few words and before we close? Sister Rose, greetings, greetings. Greetings, greetings. greetings. Sister Rose, bless you all. And, uh, and it's, it's nice to be on here just to hear about the Word of God. And again, I will say yesterday as well, we did go to Pastor Morris's wife's 80th birthday. It was beautiful. It was packed out. There was practically not even enough seats to sit down. Luckily, we was able to get to, and we saw lots of different um, bread reindeer, which was very nice as well. 
to see all of us coming together and it was nice to see them all dancing at the end and really worshipping <laughs> God and what a well, beautiful weather it, <laughs> it was just lovely I just love to see you know the brethren unity, 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 unity and strength and at that short age to see that they're not like just rolled over you know people get to a certain age and they decide that life is over they start acting like they're so old and tired yeah, yeah, yeah it's so when true they just, so they just gave up they just gave up on life we shouldn't let a number define our energy levels. And yet, when we was that age the year before, we were you're as young as you feel, and she was absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. And she, her husband, used to be so much hope. There are a lot of hope for me, and I thought I was getting on. So it's just a blessing. And to see people that age mature. And they're in their prime of life, and they just worship God, and they look amazing. That's what we say, amazing. And Pastor Morris, as we know, when he's preaching, he will run up from the back of the state right to the bottom of the church. Mm -hmm. Energy, money. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Full energy. Full of energy. energy. Wow, energy. really, I'm telling you, man. Like as well. to see when he's like well. preaching, man. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. He's a good preacher. Yes. 